I conducted a social experiment with two adult African cheetahs. I wanted to observe and record their nocturnal behaviors. So I spent 10 nights inside this concrete box, which is inside their enclosure. The following are more interesting things I discovered about cheetahs. We are all creatures of habit and like certain things. That includes these two cheetahs who behave the same way every night. They took up positions in the cheetah box the same way every time. Faith would flop down next to me while Eden would take a position up near my head. That's because Eden loved grooming me. It was an infatuation of hers. All cheetahs love grooming, and some more than others, like Eden here. Purring and grooming are the ways cheetahs say hello. There's something special about grooming to them. I haven't quite figured it out, but it clearly gives them some pleasure. And it's not just taste, because they prefer to groom hair. They'll lick skin too, but they'll go out of their way to groom your scalp. It's also a survival instinct, because it keeps the fur clean. Hey, hey, Eden. Hey, Eden. Oh, it's on the ground. It's on the ground. Groom sessions lasted anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. Oh, that hurts. Oh, I gotta go through this uh, first 10 minutes. I wouldn't care about her grooming if it wasn't so horribly painful. You're probably thinking, well, why don't you just move? If I moved, then I'd lose the best part of my bed. So my best defense was just to block her with my hands. Or just take the pain and bleed. Which I did many times. Yeah, lightly, lightly lick, lightly lick. Uh, but even that didn't stop her sometimes. And as you see, she grooms me off my pillow anyway. Faith like Newton here. Uh, Start a groom session and it hurts. Uh, this was her house, and I was her property for the night. She couldn't believe her luck. Having someone to groom, nibble, and bite all night. Every night. Lock my skin off. I let them do what they wanted to a point. Yeah, oh, he's killing me. And I think they love me for it. I let her let groom me. She likes it so much. I let them both groom me because they like doing it. It was natural behavior, and it helped in our relationship. Oh, that hurts. Oh, my thumb, hit my thumb. I didn't want that. Oh, Eden, you're killing me. Here, my face. My face is better. And she eventually is good to try to go to sleep. <laughs> Blocking her with my hands had limited success. Possible take. She just used her snoot to push my hands out of the way. <laughs> try to push my hand away. They like to bring the hair. You know, I can't take any more. But it was normally Faith who came to the rescue. She could take Eden's incessant grooming. Oh, I just got to lay on top of me. That's not a good position. There we go. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Faith. In between the purring, grooming, and love biting, Eden would also nibble, actually chewing on my ear. Oh, this is biting my ear. Biting my ear. I know of one other cheetah that does <laughs> this. So game we used to do bite my ear. I really don't know the infatuation behind this. She stops purring when she's doing I it. My ear. I can only guess it's more cub behavior. It actually hurt less than her grooming. Perhaps it's just a cheetah fetish. Ow. You bite a little of my ear. It's gonna bite my ear. Ah, oh, bite my ear. Again, it's not an aggressive thing. It's an overly. Um. Uh, oh. 
it's an overly, what do they call it, pacifying effect. I had to double check to make sure my ear was still attached. No harm done. Yet. She also liked biting my nose. Yeah, my nose. Remember when I told you cheetahs prefer grooming hair? Well, Eden discovered my furry eyebrow and nibbled on it. Eden, you're gonna hurt me. You're probably wondering, well, did she ever injure you? She pinched my thumb and hand a little too hard perfect. once. But it was her constant grooming that drew blood. It's face, man. Oh, look at that. See, it's already bleeding. Right there. She made my ear bleed, too. But not from biting, but from constant grooming. That's an old wound. That's an old... old... An old, uh, groom spot. Not for the squeamish, but I have seen worse than MMA fights. Lay down. Calm down. Even calm down. I tried anything to calm her down. Painful routine. It's all affection and love. It's so sweet, man. Connection. This is her house, man. The one. We're in her territory. Let's go. Let's go sleep now. Maybe. Let's start purr. I even tried letting her have my thumb. That, uh, okay, straight in, not in the, on the side. Be... That worked for a while, but she preferred my scalp and the skin on my face. Massage her under chin here. But I can't do this. I'm gonna sleep like this. Now. Last time I did this, she, bit, she woke up in a nightmare and bit down hard. She stopped purring and relaxed. Good girl. Good girl. I gotta sleep, Sonny. Go to sleep. All she needed was a pacifier. Yeah. Just look at that face. That's it then. Not mine, hers. That's contentment. It was finally time to get some sleep. But then the lions roared, the wolves howled, and the cheetahs purred. Oh well. Stay tuned for part four and the conclusion of sleeping inside a cheetah enclosure. I'll showcase more of their cat behavior and give my final thoughts about this amazing experience. If you missed part one and two of sleeping inside a cheetah enclosure, well here they are. Just click either videos below and it will take you right to them. If you like these videos, please give it the thumbs up and consider joining my channel.